Let's talk synthases. Synthases are the genes responsible for converting chemicals in the cannabis plant. Uh, other plants as well, but today we're gonna to be talking about cannabis. So we're going to be looking at specifically some THCA synthases. And these are responsible for converting CBGA into THCA in uh, plants. And these traditionally are looked at as type one plants, THC dominant. Uh, we're also going to look at some variations that are present in the CBG lines that we uh, that we make available for farmers. <clears throat> so when we're talking about synthases, we're talking literally about A, C, Gs, and Ts. These are amino acids that are the foundation of every organism on the planet. These amino acids operate in triples. So when you have three particular amino acids in a particular order, they will translate into a particular protein. So what we can do in the case of, uh, what we can do is look at ch these individual changes that happen uh, in amino acids that lead to protein changes. Sometimes these are meaningful, sometimes they're not. Sometimes uh, you know, they have no effect on a gene and other times they can actually shut down the entire expression of a gene. In the case of a THCA synthase, we are looking at uh, a gene that is 1,635 base pairs long. It means that there's 1,635 A, C, G, and T converting into proteins. So let's look at some of these structural variations. And again, the color that you're seeing here is the protein that is expressed by the, the triple amino acids. And what you're gonna see is that there's a lot of expression that is identical. These amino acids are all the same across all these different plants until we get to 187 base pairs, where we see that an A in all of the other population ends up being a C in one particular plant. And that C leads to an amino acid change. Now, whether or not that's chemically meaningful, we have, we have no idea at this point. Even if we did, we wouldn't be sharing that uh, with the world. Uh, because this is the sort of thing that is really, really important to plant breeders. These single nucleotide polymorphisms can literally lead to a plant that makes one compound versus another. And being able to catalog each and every one of these synthases uh, and what their catalytic abilities are when fed different compounds as precursors is where the cannabis industry is headed. It's what we've been doing for a while. Uh, but it's, it's critically important. This is not something that you're gonna be getting from people who are selling seeds out of a backpack at a convention. The next SNP is at 373 base pairs, which is right here. And it may or may not be a SNP. So this is one of the issues that you run into with sequencing is that there is sometimes a high level of uncertainty. In this case, an S means that that amino acid could either be a C or a G. Now C would create uh, a shift in the protein for both of these plants, uh, the way that it's expressed. But it could also be a G, which is what every other plant in this population has. So this is something that we need to go back and resequence. The next SNP is a very interesting one. This is probably the most important SNP in uh, THCA synthases. This is at 749 base pairs. And we can see some segregation here between a number of different plants, including our, very interestingly, our, our uh, high CBG lines. Uh, the THCA synthase, non-functional THCA synthase, that encodes uh, basically nothing and just allows for CBG accumulation, has the same uh, shared protein expression as a number of other high THC plants in here. But interestingly, we've got a couple that are different. So this is where you have likely meaningful structural variations taking place. Uh, and again, we've got three plants that have a very different amino acid at that 
749 base pair position. And then we have five plants that could either be an A or a C, either A or C. And so that's what we're seeing in this population is it could either be A or C. And so we need to resequence all five of these to be able to identify what that actually is. And then go back and figure out what that SNP ends up creating downstream in terms of uh, chemical output. So another interesting SNP at 998. We'll go back, there was, uh, there it was. Uh, and this is a pretty good example. Again, so here the one unknown is either C or G. And what we're seeing is that there's either C or G for all 17 plants in this population. Our CBG plant uh, it has a G at position 998. And there's a couple others in here, which is uh, Animal Cookies, Cake Breath, and Dosey -si Doe that all share this, this uh, SNP, um, whereas everything else is a C. And it leads to a protein change. Uh, what's fairly interesting is that we know that this is a pure CBG plant, almost no THC produced, no CBD, it's, it's all CBG. These three tend to produce, uh, they're type one plants, high THC, but they also produce uh, a little bit of CBG, like 1%, um, enough to, to, to register on, on test results. So this could be an important structural variation that leads to a chemical change. Not entirely sure, but you know, obviously a lot of this is a uh, working hypothesis. The next variation, important variation here is at 1064. And this is, this is uh, most likely what makes our CBG variety so unique. And this is something that can be identified and traced. If someone is using genetics that came from, from us, uh, this, is, this is where it happens. At position 1064, uh, the amino acid changes from G to A in our CBG lines. And that is the major difference between, uh, major structural difference between that inactive THCA synthase that leads to CBG accumulation and an act, fully active THCA synthase that leads to THCA accumulation. Next structural difference here is at 1229. Past it. There we go. Uh, but it may not be a structural variation. Again, this is a, an R means either A or G. And in this case, all seven, oh, 16 out of 17 are G with one unknown that could be G. So it's likely a, likely a sequencing artifact. And then the final. SNP that we see out of this population is at 1482 and 1484 with one particular variety, uh, which is kind of, a, it's an interesting potential polymorphism, but we don't know if it is or not. M means either A or C, and in this case, everything is A and everything is C, but what's pretty interesting actually is that if we were to look at the CBC uh, synthase, there is a similar, an identical shift here where instead of an A at position 1481, there is a C. And at 1483, 1484, excuse me, uh, there is an A. So they swap and it leads to two, two different proteins, uh, two different proteins being encoded. Which is a fairly interesting thing, but again, this is this could just be uh, an artifact present in the sequencing, and from there on out, it's all the same. But what what this tells us is that it's incredibly important to know your synthesis, to know what kind of chemical data uh, corresponds with genotype data. In this case, the sequencing of particular genes that convert precursor chemicals into compounds that we're interested in. 
if you don't know your synthases, uh, there's no way that you can accurately describe to a farmer, clients, or even your own breeding team uh, what your plants can do and what they should, uh, what these people can expect from them. Uh, like we saw at uh, position 1064 with our CBG plant, you literally have a single nucleotide polymorphism that takes a plant that would produce THC and does not, it leads to CBG accumulation. Well, thanks for joining us today. Uh, it's really important for us to be able to at least get this information out to folks uh, so that they understand that there's some significant differences that can happen between plants and if the if the breeding company that you're purchasing seeds or clones from is not keeping track of this information, you should question it. Uh, we showed you THCA synthases today, but more importantly, the CBDA synthases that are responsible for uh, CBD production in industrial hemp plants uh, have very important structural differences similar to what we saw today uh, that end up leading to variable catalytic capabilities uh, that can either lead to success or failure. If your breeding company is not actively investigating this type of information, then they're setting themselves and, and you as a farmer up for failure. And this is not something that we are uh, comfortable with doing. It's not how we would want to operate. And it's the main reason why we have spent so much time, energy, and money uh, to make all of the sequencing happen in-house and for us to be able to fully understand what's happening within our, our, our gene bank and our library of plants.